Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with a very good, close personal friend of mine, Jason Rosander. Jason, what is up, my brother? How are you, man? How's it going, man? Good to be on again. Your beard gets better and better (laughs) and better every time I see you. (laughs) (laughs) It's awesome, dude. You are a living, true renaissance man. So for you guys that don't know Jason, he has been on my podcast probably, I think this is at least the third time. I know you and I have done other podcasts together and live streams, but many times we've been together uh, Jason has an amazing book, uh, which we'll talk about, you know, on this show today. Jason is one of the most aware people I know on this planet. Him and I have known each other, bro, for eight years now. Uh, yeah, Jason actually while. reached, dude, you reached out to me in 2015. I was thinking about this this morning. You reached out to me in 2015 because you had read the TRT manual and, yep. you know, you were like, hey, man, I just want you to know that I, I, you really helped me. And then, you know, you and I became very close friends. You, edited and helped write the TOT Bible. And obviously we've been very, very close friends ever since then. So again, it's always an honor to have you here on the show. Uh, Your background or your bio for people that don't know is you are an author of uh, The the Mind is Your Prison. Your Mind is a Prison. Your Mind is a Prison. And by the way, guys, that is a profound book. Uh, I highly recommend that. That's like in one of my top five books for anyone who is a seeker, who is walking the seeking path, it's just such an amazing book. And of course, you're also a philosopher, a trainer, and a climber. You you uh, spend a lot of time, as you say, on the mountains, uh, yep. away from the herd, away from the garbage, <laughs> which is the majority of mankind today in this day and age. And by the way, for markings, today is Thursday, March 23rd. Um, so we're going to go a lot of different ways and directions on this podcast, but maybe just right now to get your take on... Um, you know, are you buying humanity or are you selling in the next three to five to 10 years? Cause we both know the planet's not going to go away, but I mean, like, what do you see, you know, and it's an opinion question, of course, but like, where do you see it? Is it going to get a lot worse before it gets better? You know, that's a good question because I don't know if it can get much worse. I think, I think the context, I look at things almost Mm -hmm. more of contextually than just the content you know, Hawkins obviously says that a lot, but if you look at everything, like we were saying before, it's all out in the open. It's pretty obvious. And I think from a contextual basis, I don't think it really gets worse. I think it's already, I think it has shown itself. We could yeah. say that. I think the yeah. system has shown itself because we get lost all of us in politics and all these things, but we're missing the overarching curve here, which is Nobody listens to anything. Nobody's thinking critically anymore. They're aligning with their side, not just political, just in general. They're aligning with their side and then they're moving to it. And as we also said before, in the midst of that, now let me segue, you do have groups that are asking questions, that are looking more, that it's funny now, I know you've noticed this, but we we haven't talked about it. How you notice how spirituality is sort of, or let's say metaphysics is sort of going into everything now where you'll read a book that's about nothing to do with it, but they're having like a spiritual crisis. You know, there's this, they're kind of tying in together right now where you could read a health book, but they're talking about spiritual stuff. So we're in a time where the context has shifted so much that the ones that have the spark are sparking and the ones that don't are just losing the flame altogether. I don't think that's good or bad. I think that's just what we're seeing, you know? Yeah. I mean, well said, I mean, bro, there's so many ways we can go with it right now. Um, You know, like we were just saying, talking off air about, you know, being down in Mexico. I mean, 
I think, you know, to, to your point of like the bifurcation is you know, you're either awake and aware to it now and you see everything, like you said, it's out in the open or you're not. Yeah, and yeah. if you're not, it's still a choice as you and I were saying the other day or talking the other day on WhatsApp, because like you said, it's all out in the open. I mean, all you have to yeah, do is fucking yeah. open your eyes and you can see what's going on. I mean, you know, you know, people are sick, uh, injured. I mean, again, you know, I don't want to bring that up because I don't want this podcast to be marked by YouTube or anything, but like, it's so obvious, like how can you technically be a physician or in the medical community still pushing that, you know, what, I mean, it's like cog- cognitive dissonance 101. I mean, it's like, are you serious? Like, who are you? And then if you're somebody that's listening to them and buying into that, then who are you, right? So, dude, people are choosing their state of being now. You're either awake or you're not. Yeah, and I think what all that comes down to is like, with every detail that we have going on is are people making these decisions through a critical lens or an aware lens, take all the spiritual out of it. Are you doing it from a critically aware perspective? And nobody is. So like if we were to tie everything into just one thing, every single issue that we can talk about, can't talk about, it all ties into, are you critically thinking are you thinking for yourself? And as, as you talk about all the time, a lot more than I do, intuition. Intuition and intellect have to come together. And what everyone's doing is they're hiding in the intellect. They're saying, right. well, someone told me this, so it should be okay, and boom. So the main message and the main thesis here is like, are you are people doing things through a critical lens that benefits them? Whether you do it or not, you do these things that me and you don't agree with that's fine but what context are you doing it through what lens are you doing it through and i think what we have seen now is an epidemic of a lack of critical thinking and you know that ties into spirituality and awareness and all of it yeah i mean yeah i mean i mean it's just it's so weird dude because people choose to like I mean, because let's be honest, I mean, you and I have been talking about this for so long now, it's like second nature, but like, there is nothing, none of this is real, right? Like, like you always talk about, like, fear is an illusion. If a reptilian, a giant 20 foot dragon, reptilian monster, whatever you want to call it, appeared right now in front of you and I, and it was like, I'm going to eat you. We would like bow our heads and go ahead. I'm ready for my next, you know, experience anyway, because we would know that it's not really real in the third dimension. All of this stuff is imagined for some form of spiritual evolution. You know, you always talk about walking the path, but like most people are so afraid I mean, literally, yes. they're afraid of everything. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, you know, let's think about medical. The entire allopathic medical system is a scam because it's based on getting people to take diagnostic tests that pr- predict nothing, show nothing, but they tell the people that, oh, you had a growth in your colon or, oh, there's a growth under your boob or, oh, there's a growth here or there. And so then the people create the fear, right? They manifest that oh my god worse. I might have cancer right yeah. I might have cancer. They then ask the doctor, well, what do you recommend we do? And then the doctor, of course, because the doctor gets paid to perform a surgery or an excision or whatever, will say, well, we you know we recommend you get it cut out because it could become cancer. And then, as you know, the mind is a terrible thing, and it goes to yeah. fear, 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 worry, worry, gloom, doom, and then boom, we've created the actual reality yeah. which never existed yeah. in the first place. So so people are their own worst enemy, right? Yeah. And, and it comes down to, you know, like a placebo effect. I've read a lot. I've read a lot about that. And it totally. goes in re- reverse too. where, I mean, there's these stories out there where people were told something, it was never existed, the paperwork got mixed up or whatever, and then something happens. And they created that. So it's not that that's the only case. But you know, I live, I wrote about this a lot. I've lived in fear. Or I lived in fear for we a lot have, of years. Bro. Yeah, we yeah, all for have. a lot of years. And and back to what you said about like the illusion part is it's it's basically the idea that most of it is created mentally. It's right. created in the mind right. in the sense that we see something, there is a reaction, and that reaction builds. And it does happen in the 
medical field and it happens in spirituality. And I, I've said this before, I, I wrote about this with psychedelics and all that, you know, it, it hits a point where it has to be faced or it's going to run your whole life. Fear will literally be your guiding arrow, but you won't know it. That's the problem. And I, I've, I know why people don't go on this path because it hurts, you know, it hurt me for a lot of years and that fear ultimately is being, you know, driven and created by the mind. It's not, you know, here we go again, Hawkins caution and fear always have caution, but fear. I mean, when you were talking, I'm like, I've seen people in public, their phone, I always use this example, but I saw it the other day, their phone go dead and they lose their mind. I mean, this is no different than being attacked in a war zone. These people are going bananas. So I said this to you before. I, I had a lot of reaction to that back in the day. These people are idiots, blah, blah, blah. But now, after years have gone by in this process, you feel bad. Yeah. I mean, to live in something like that in modern times is really sad. But that's what we're seeing is I've had people that have reached out to me literally reached out to me for help. And I'm like, this is what you have to do. And they're like, oh, well, I can do that, but I can't, you know, something happened to me when I was a kid and I can't look at that. And I'm like, oh, no. that's what's running your life. That runs your entire life, whether you know it or not. So that that's kind of an example of where we're at right now in society. We had three years of people be, or more of being very fearful. So now it's a way of life. Well, with that, to, to, to echo that, you can see the people who are gone from a fear-based standpoint by the ones that are wearing masks in public. Let's just be honest. Let's just call it like it is. The masks have scientifically been proven to do nothing. In fact, they've been scientifically proven to create a worse situation, right? They cause hypoxia. They cause a contamination of more bacteria because now you're breathing in lint and fibers and dust and whatever else that those things uh, capture. They have literally been clinically disproven. They do not work. They are utterly and totally worthless. But yet people are still wearing them in public, Jason, because as you said, for two and a half years, the news, which is their only source of information because they have no intuition, they have no intuitive guidance, they have no awareness, they have zero. They listen to the external. They, they, it, it, was, it was zapped into their brain that you wear a mask. And how many times did you have people, older people in general, or comorbid people, you know, again, elderly, weak, and, you know, the, the most vulnerable say to you, well, what about them? You wear the mask to protect them. They're so entrained by the lie, the mainstream narrative of wearing the mask, you know, protect yourself, blah, blah, blah. That again, now is now a laugh and LOL, but bro, you still see it, right? You go to any public place, you go to airports, they're wearing the mask still. Yeah. And you know, another side of that too, is that I would ask people is let's say that the news says something and it's correct. I would still look at those people and I would say, okay, but why did you take the action to do that? Exactly. It's back to our point again, where it's like, why are people doing what they're doing? Because right. I don't care what side you're on. If you're watching a television and saying, well, I'm going to do that. And it just stops right there. Yeah. You have to know why. I mean, there's no, I mean, you both know it could be a fine line because you could go down rabbit holes for the rest of your life. I mean, me and you with how we read and how we study, you find this, you find that. But the bottom line is you got to make a decision for yourself. You know, well, bro, and they, nobody and, reads. You just said uh, it right there. I mean, I've had people say this to me in the last couple of weeks who are readers. Again, you know, in our groups and private groups, they're like, Jay, how can you expect? And, and again, I know this is going to come off bad, but it's Jay Campbell and Jason Rosander talking. The kids that are under 25 for the most part are gone. Let's just be honest. Okay. My kids are 15 and 13. Nick's kids. I mean, if you do not take your children and pull them aside and teach them how to critically think, how to discern the importance of actually reading classical literature and books, bro, they got no shot because you and I both know, you already said it, this is where they learn. And this person yeah. that I spoke to who you know very well said to me three days ago is like, 
how can you expect young people to know anything when all they can read is six seconds? Because yeah. six seconds is what Snapchat or TikTok or Instagram reels or YouTube shorts or whatever it is, which gets shorter and shorter, bombard yeah. their attention, attention span. Yeah. Minimize their attention span. So it's like, how can we expect these people to read books? I mean, Jason, I'm not kidding you when I say this, this, the educational system has been so disen, disenfranchised or, or just disemboweled. They don't even have our kids reading classical books anymore, or classical yeah. literature. They don't read yeah. anything. They don't learn anything. How can you learn if you don't read? Yeah. And, and what's the definition of learning nowadays? It <laughs> sounds like it's just, it sounds like it's just memorizing stuff that you're told, you know, and it's, you have to really, but I mean, I, I go back to this a lot, you know, I could argue, and I'm sure you'll agree. My life hasn't necessarily been the easiest because I ask questions because I right, explore because I study. So once again, right. There's these two paths where right. it's like one's going to be a little rougher, one whatever. So what do they take? I mean, you literally, like you said, can pick up your phone and your whole life is in that phone. I love the technological component of it to know I can throw a phone in my pocket and right. do work and like that's right. awesome. Right. But social media and the learning mechanism that we have now, I, it, it, I see a lot of kids that are good at memorizing. <laughs> But I don't see they're any that are good at thinking. They're, <laughs> they're not good at they're thinking. Nothing. But here's no. another point. I, I've been really harping on this online is until you have essentially, now this is a strong word, but until you have essentially transcended the mind and thought, meaning you see it for what it is, you will not be able to use it. I don't care if you have 75 PhDs, this and that. Until you know how that mechanism works, which you're not going to find on social media and all this, you find it in books and study, you can't use it. So these, you know, younger kids and all that, I don't have kids, but I know what they're doing and I yeah. see it. I visit people, my family members, and it's like you said, they are in it for 10 seconds, six seconds, and that's it. But like you said, how do you actually grow a group of thinkers? No. With that, with that, and it sounds like we're being negative, but I don't see data to support that's what's coming in the next wave of, you know, adults or what. Well, I mean, look, none of them, I mean, again, Nick talks about this when he was, you know, thankfully he's out of the corporate world now, but like when he would be called in to save these plants and these factories and these places because the young kids had no clue. And, you know, he would get in there and he would be like, my God, these places, half these places were bombs. I mean, yeah. dude, look, the educational system has collapsed. Let's just be honest. In the last 15, I would say it's probably gone on in the last eight to 12 to 12 to 15 years. You know, they, whatever you want to call it, whatever this, you know, just call it this, this transhumanism bent. It took over learning. It took over the uh, university systems. It took over the high school systems. It's taken over everything now. and like you said, they don't want anyone to discern or critically think they want to be told what to do, how to do it. And it's the go along, get along mentality, which is socialism. I mean, bro, they've interviewed kids in the last four years. I wouldn't say it's like last three to five years about socialism. And of course they don't know anything about socialism. Yeah, they don't, they know, don't know what it actually, they, yeah. Right. Yeah. They don't know about Stalin or, you know, my mouth, see tongue or any of the, you know, socialist, communist, you know, the, the despots, because it's all been, you know, engineered out. They, they, again, they have no historical awareness, but they think that socialism is good. They literally yeah. think that socialism is good. It's like, well, why? Would, I mean, they were interviewing young kids about the V. And I remember reading some of these groups. I mean, it was, you know, it became memes on the internet, but they were literally saying like, well, you get the V because everyone else is doing it. And why would you go against everyone else? So, you know, if everyone else is doing it, it's good, right? I mean, everybody else is doing it. So we got to do it ourselves. I mean, that's the mind. It's group think engineered, which is collectivism or socialism. And bro, that's where we are. That's, that's yeah, now where we are. It's the easy route, you know, right. and I, and it's, it's sad because all this study I do of human nature and which is a lot for myself, you know, I've thrown myself under the bus and it's really sad to think that 
that's the place we're at right now where there's no, cause my opinion has always been like, I don't care what somebody does, whether it's necessarily right or wrong, right. but it's more or less, do you know why? I mean, that, <laughs> that's my whole, that's my whole message that I put like every tweet, every newsletter and the book is about do what you feel is best, but do you know why? So when you see someone on, getting interviewed and saying, well, I like this political side. I like that. It's like, okay, but why? And the second they're asked why there's no, you know, whatever. So I think, you know, to give your listeners kind of, you know, a little bit of a tool, it's like, Hey, you know, do ask yourself what is behind these decisions. And I I don't think that's going on because people, especially in the spiritual community. And I tweeted this the other day, are getting stuck and looking for these goals. We do that in life, but just see it and know why. Know why. And it, it basically sums up everything that we get into piece by piece is, do you know why you're doing it? That's why I wrote in the book, you know, the the mind is a prison and all this, because if we don't know it and we don't know why, you're, you're a robot. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, right? What do you think the percentage of people? So the first point that we were really going to talk about, I know we're going all over the place, but it's all awesome and relevant is waking up in modern times. Now, obviously that's also been kind of an engineered scam of telling all of us that, Oh, yeah. people are waking up everywhere. You know, Dr. Yeah. Leo Zagami's written two amazing books. Uh, you know, conf- what is it? Confessions of an Illuminati volume seven and eight. I just interviewed him last week for his book volume eight and he breaks down Hollywood like it better than I've ever seen it. I mean, you know, Hollywood has been a tool of them for so long, but like he was telling me, he's like, Jay, are you kidding me? He said, there's still not even 5% of people on the planet that are awake and aware to what's really going on. You know, I want to, I want to say, Leo, I love you. Cause he's really right. But I mean, I want to give people the benefit of the doubt, but is he right, bro? Is it even more than 5%? I was thinking maybe less, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, and I don't mean that. that. I don't mean that in, you know, some sort of like egoic or like spiritual ego, but I think it just takes, I said this the other day, like I said, it's tortured me for years. So it's not that it's necessarily a good thing, but I can remember being literally super young and just thinking something isn't right here. I can remember, I can remember getting into the workforce and thinking something is not right. Now I, you know, they say that there's multiple paths up the mountain, right? When it comes to spirituality, mind has been more of the knowledge mind path, but I don't think it's an easy route. And I think it takes a certain you know, complex mechanism to think about it. Cause I don't walk around all day going, Oh, this is all scandal, but I just see it for what it is. And I'm like, Oh, you know, human nature is human nature. Business is business. Spirituality has turned into a business. And it's right. funny because you right. brought up um, how it's kind of a scam. Well, in a lot of ways it is because spirituality has turned into a pain pill. I say this yeah, all totally. the time. And I feel bad because people go to it in pain and they want relief, right? But you are never going to make a state of contentment at subjectively. That's like what Hawkins would say. It's a subjective experience yep. unless you know how to think, unless that mechanism is pulled away from sort of the popular stuff. And a lot of spirituality is that nowadays. And I think to really wake up is very, very painful. And if we were to say, what is waking up? It's seeing things as they are. I mean, and that, that has not been easy. And there has been times where I remember thinking to myself, I don't want to keep doing this. I know why people don't do this. And you know, it's, it's rough. So as far as percentage, I don't really believe in the, more people are waking right. up, blah, blah, blah. You could say maybe more people are becoming, I mean, what's another word for it? Like becoming sort of the, the eyes are moving around. They're sort of <laughs> checking their peripherals. But the idea that this is a time where that path is opening up for people, I don't, I don't 
Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Like it's, that, you could just... argue it's the opposite because again, yeah. if, if, if truly 75 to 80%, and again, that could be a lot too, but if 75 to 80% of the world is veed, then we know that those that got the real bad shot, you know, have been neurologically turned off. Right. You could also make an argument, you know, cause I know you're familiar with the works of Steiner. Steiner talked about this in 2000, I mean, in 1913. He literally foresaw this coming from his work, you know, in the theo- theosophy and, you know, from his meditation and his deep, you know, astral traveling and projection and all this stuff. He saw that they were literally going to design, he called it a vaccine that was, uh, you know, had the, the inner spiritual workings of Araman. And, you know, an Araman being the negative entity or whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's all the same thing. There's so many different names for it, but like that they would literally eventually get into the human soul so that they could feed off of this human soul energy, the, the soul, right? I mean, again, these are dissonant waveform beings, whatever you want to call them, archons, demons, interdimensionals, again, armons, armonic spirits. But he saw this in literally 1913. And so here we are now. Um, you got all these people out there, Nick included, talking about mRNA, you know, talking about um, the, the graphene oxide, talking about the hydrogel, talking about all these self-repeating structures that have been, you know, quote unquote, pushed into people through the V, you know, uh, process. We don't know what they're doing, bro. What we do know, and this isn't, you know, conspiracy theory or, you know, um, fooey stuff anymore is that, uh, we are in a very, uh, powerful conduitive or conduit conductive is the right word. 5g wireless EMF environment. And if you just extrapolate a little bit from there, like, how do we know that the things that have been put into people aren't literally conductive from a technological standpoint? I mean, how do we know that again, what uh, Steiner said was not ultimately the, the end game, which was again, to spiritually detune, turn off, you know, disassociate, whatever you want to call it, the human soul, because if these well, negative forces are literally feeding off of the quote unquote etheric energy, which again, you and I have read from so many different people then dude, that's the simplest Occam's razor solution. But as you said, so many people don't want to deal with that. They don't want to be like listening to that. Well, and you know, one thing that kept coming to mind was the induction point. And I actually tweeted something about this today, you know, more, more about philosophy and spirituality where it's like, well, all these things are happening. All these things are going on but there has to be an opening for them to go right. on, you know? Exactly. So like we're in a, right. we're in a toxic environment, no matter what it is. I mean, everything is toxic and everything going on mm-hmm. and there has to be an opening for the person to sort of receive that, you know? And it's like, you could have all this stuff going on in the world, but where is the person from a internal perspective, a conductive perspective, you know, I don't walk around around certain people and like, you know, feel that it's just kind of like I'm in my thing. I, I guess what I'm saying is you have to have a door open in right. order for something to walk in. And that's, that's, right. that's, that's the problem that we see now is at the base level, everyone was ripe for these times. Yeah, exactly. And you have to ask why were they right? Because we could go through each detail but you have to zoom out and say, okay, but why were we in that position in the first place? In other words, we weren't very strong as a right. internal people yeah. t- during this time. And, you know, and that's why I say I, I, I feel bad for people because in reality, they've had these flanks wide open right. for all these years. And then once there was something that could come in, you know, 
To that, to that point of coming in, I know you know the guys at Focus Life Force Energy. You and I have talked about them in the past. I mean, you and I, I, I remember you just triggered me. I remember we were doing a live stream talking about your book. And I remember bringing up to you that the guys at Focus Life Force Energy, when I met with them, which was in the end of, God, time this is flying now. We're in 2023. But when I talked to them in, so you and I did a thing in 2021 when your book came out, right? Your book came out in 2021, right? Yeah, it was around yep. there. Yeah, it was in 2021. It was like around April or March or something. And then I did a live stream. And you and I did a live stream about launching your book. And then I did a live stream with the owners. I forget their names of Focus Life Force Energy. And they told me it was not long after you, but they told me that in September of 2019, which is right when I got back from Peru, which was another interesting thing. No coincidences, only synchronicities. But they said that the biofield of the human, of the collective consciousness of the planet was at the highest it was ever measured, right? Because that's what they're always measuring. You know, those guys are high level Hawkins initiates. But they said that it was at 244 collectively. And then one month later, they dropped the bioweapon, whatever it was, at the Wuhan Military Olympics. And then we all know what happened after that. The world went into chaos and dissonance. And then they measured it. The, so then the lowest that it ever dropped or that, you know, their technology that they used, they measured the human biofield in April of 2000. 20, I'm sorry, it was either March or April. Again, it was right before you and I talked and then later after, because I didn't talk to them until about two or three months later, but then they measured in April, 2021, which if you remember was the height of the panic, you know, because everybody at that point was like getting the V and everyone was scared shitless of like what may or may not happen. I remember, dude, this is a true story. Uh, I was in Miami for a medical conference and there was a woman in the gym. Me and Monica went to the gym and she was screaming at the top of her lungs, like bloody murder, because we were not wearing a mask in the gym. It was the most insane thing. I mean, I saw this woman, like her face, she was in absolute paranoia. But anyway, they said that the, the human energy field dropped to 68, which is, you know, grief between grief and apathy on the vibrational scale. This is for you guys that don't know. I think most people know that in my audience know though, but this is the Hawkins map of consciousness. And, um, they said that that was the lowest that they had ever measured it. So it goes back to what you were saying, which was they created an environment of sheer terror that if you weren't like you and me, or you weren't a person who was you know, working on their inner game or doing meditation or being reflective or contemplative or introspective or whatever, which is again, most people, uh, that you were engineered into oblivion. You were event- You were literally engineered into walking around with a mask on, scared shitless i mean bro you've seen that meme on twitter of that woman who was sitting there at the restaurant with her mask on and she would literally like look around and then she would pull the mask down and she would jam the food into her mouth and pull the mask up back over her mouth because she was so petrified of pulling the mask down and eating i mean when you see a person like that you realize that they have been engineered into the lowest vibratory field that we can even experience because their fear is so, you know, palliative and, 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 and just, it's, 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 it's like visceral. Like you feel, you can see and feel and hear and sense the fear that they have. And that's what they did, bro. That's literally the environment that they created. And again, how many people are still living there right now, two years yeah. later or a year and a half later being told that they don't have to worry about COVID or whatever it was. They're still out there wearing their masks. It's insane. And dude, a lot of these people will never recover, Jason. They'll never recover. And the sad part is, you know, what state do you have to be in in order to be that fearful? So like, you know, this this is something that wasn't necessarily just sparked now. It's like these are, you know, and I know because I keep throwing myself like I, I felt that for years, was years and years before all this. But, you know, what state do you have to be in for that to get to that point? You know what I mean? Like, you know, you can be cautious. You can be aware. I'm not, you know, walking around licking doorknobs. But, you know, what state does someone have to naturally, that's the word, be in for it to get to that point? So now we go back again to the you know, deeper, the inside, the context, where does this like and I sometimes think about that where I think how come essentially every single human being is born, 
They are programmed by the people around them in their environment. And then yep. they spend the rest of their life in fear or the rest of their life trying to undo it. And that's where right. spirituality and that's where the non-dual people get it right because they, they kind of say, look, like, just cut this off at the knees. Like, it, they're not being negative, but they're essentially saying this entire thing is like a game. It's an illusion. It's sort of a mess. And you have to get so far down to the bottom of that to where no matter what happens, it doesn't matter, you know, yeah. and that's a thing. It, it's like, that. that's all I kept thinking about when you were talking is where, where were certain people before? I mean, they, they weren't showing up to the, you know, football field ready to go. There was already some pretty deep, you know, so the point is in modern times, we are naturally living in that. And then anything else in our environment, it is just times a hundred. Well, bro, let's stay there because I know what the answer is. The answer is, is religion. I mean, the reason that they're there, and I know this is going to piss people off, but you and I don't care. Uh, so, so you just mentioned the book, uh, you know, Gnosis by Tom Montauk, a good friend of, of the shows, uh, which is a very deep unraveling of like what's going on, you know, in the quote unquote spiritual war that's going on. And look, if you don't realize that there is a spiritual war going on on this planet right now, then just get out, walk away from this show right now and unsubscribe from my YouTube channel. But I mean, like the truth is, bro, is that people have been conditioned for thousands of years by Abrahamic religious teachings and even the Eastern. I mean, it's not just Abrahamic, oh, yeah. it's the whole yeah, planet. Yeah. The whole planet yeah. has been falsely engineered to believe in, again, an external savior. You talked about this in your book a million times when the only savior, and, and by the way, for you people that don't really truly understand spirituality and the teachings of Yeshua ben Joseph, he literally told us if he really was a he, and he wasn't some sort of metaphor for all these different avatars. And that's debatable. It doesn't matter because the teaching is what matters. He told us that the kingdom of heaven was within you. Which is, an, which is basically a metaphor for you are your own savior when you realize that through your higher self or your, your, you know, your super conscious wisdom, your intuition, whatever you want to call it, the Christ of your own consciousness, there's a million names in the spiritual world for it. When you connect with that feeling or that energy, again, just think of it as your intuition. Most people understand that. That intuition will always guide you. You know, when people say, trust your gut. That's what we're talking about. That is that divine connection to quote unquote, the source, you know, the universal consciousness, God, if you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, it's so misplayed, but it's not Jason, what they have been taught it is, which is literally a man with a long white beard, wearing a golden robe with a chalice or yeah. a trident yeah. sitting on yeah. a cloud, judging them literally yeah. judging them and then them made to feel that they're not good enough or they're yeah. not enough. And then what yeah. does that, what does that mean? It means, cause it goes back to your point. They don't love and trust themselves. Yeah. And when you yeah. don't love and trust yourself, bro, it doesn't matter what guys like you and I tell you, how many times have you and I coached people where they come to us and they're like, Hey man, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to take this supplement. I want to take this peptide. I want to use this hormone. I want to use growth hormone, blah, 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 insert whatever it is. And it's like, Dude, if you don't feel worthy of actually getting results from any of those things, it doesn't matter what I tell you because yeah, you're never yeah. going to actually create that reality. You have the ability to create whatever reality that you want or desire, but not until you actually think that you are worthy of having that reality. And that, so that's where they're all at, dude. That's why, to your yeah. point, they're so low. Because they literally have been told by religion that they're not worth a shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it's unreal. It, yeah. It's sad because that, that's a point that's missed a lot. Once again, people miss the forest for the trees about you are, and I grew up like, um, not heavy religious, but was around it and stuff. And I can yeah. yeah. And I can remember thinking so. I'm supposed to live my entire life essentially in fear right. because when this ends, it's guaranteed to be a disaster and et cetera, et cetera. So that's a point that you hit on that a lot of people miss is 
you are meant to live in fear because of the dude with the white beard and the golden gate and blah, blah, blah. Right. And you're right. And the East has done it too, because the East has said, well, you need to meditate in a cave for 75 <laughs> years and, you know, don't eat meat and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, man, that doesn't have anything to do with, it, it's no different than the chase for enlightenment where you have to have an experience. It's going to be magical. And then the rest of your life is going to be lived in bliss. And it's like one guy I read and he said it perfectly. He's like, Hey, that's cool, but you're still going to have to pay the water bill on the first, you know, that's exactly we, right. we we're grown up in either a religious space that says, be fearful because no matter what you do, somebody's watching you and it's wrong. Or it's a spiritual space of, Hey, buy the robe, buy the stuff, act like you're spiritual. So it's all these paths. And then the one in the middle is the critical one, thinking for yourself, seeing both sides, you know, whatever, which ties into everything we're saying is it's like I said before, do what you want. I know, I know some good religious people, but they're also aware enough to know that that's essentially a deeper guidepost, you know, that that's not, life itself right the bible you know a lot of these things you could get a lot out of the bible especially like the nag hamad for sure and all this but it is a metaphorical context yes Yes. of this internal process i mean that's well the problem is it's exactly right bro that you can't say it any better than what you just said it but the problem is is that most and i'll just use uh, you know I, i love to hammer catholics because i was a catholic but most of these people listen to priests who give literal interpretations, quote unquote, of the Bible or any of the texts. They don't see it as metaphor. I mean, bro, like the real truth is that, again, Tom did a great job of gnosis of breaking this down. I mean, Jesus was saying things, Yeshua, whatever you want to call him, to, the, to his disciples, and they didn't have a fucking clue what he was saying. They admitted they didn't have a clue in their writings. <laughs> There, I think it's the uh, Gospel of Thomas. The yes. guy says he says straight up, he's like, "I don't really know what you're talking about." <laughs> but to me, that's good, right? Because that shows more of like a real <laughs> dialogue. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then so, but then the problem is, and this is in obviously Paul Wallace's book, which you you know just got, and you're probably going to read through. And I just finished it. It's a phenomenal book, and you know I, I know you're familiar with all of his books. And Paul's a very good friend of mine. You would love Paul. We should probably all do a podcast together because he's such an amazing guy. But I mean, here's a guy who was 33 years a preacher, right? He was an evangelical, not evangelical, but an Anglican, but he studied evangelical and Pentecostal. But he was an Anglican priest from England uh, who then spent a lot of time in Australia. But I mean, the guy is, is absolutely as Bible educated as anybody on the planet. And he learned to read through the lines and learned to discern and, 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 and understood or became uh, aware of what was really being said. And the truth is, as you just said, it is the entire Bible was metaphor for stories and parables of great teachings called foundational spiritual precepts or concepts. And then the redactors of the Bible, which is obviously the bad guys, the guys working for the dark side, you know, made it, to a place of external savior, you know, whether it was Jesus, whether it was the Pope, whether it was, you know, Yahweh or Jehovah or any of these, you know, beings in the Bible, which again are mostly metaphoric, uh, that took away people's power, you know, again, in the Catholic religion, think of, dude, think of confession. I mean, think of how retarded confession is. You literally go to a so guy sitting on the other side of this, you know, box, this confessional, (laughs) Who's and he's a priest like you. and he's judging yeah. you. You yeah. literally are going in there, sitting down, kneeling in front of him saying, because I've done this, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been blank since my last confession. These are my sins. And then you literally give him this laundry list. I fucked my aunt's brother's daughter illegal. I mean, it's most insane shit. And then the guy sits there. I mean, again, if you really, like you say, you deconstruct this, you come in from an aware being and you don't like listen to this conformity and you know, you got to do this and you got to listen to that. You literally deconstruct it. You look at it from a neutral observation standpoint, like who is this guy to met out, you know, forgiveness or deliverance or prayers or, you know, penance or whatever it is. I mean, like how are they any different from you? But dude, as you said, People are so mind controlled that they're literally entrained in cults. Let's just call them cults. 
Christianity, Catholicism, Abrahamic teachings, Judaism, Islam, these are cults. Let's call them for what they are. People do not see them, like you said earlier, the forest through the trees, because they're so entrained on what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it. I mean, bro, I've actually had people that were non-religious in my life, never, you know, and, and they're so blessed, right, to grow up in a family that never made them do any of the nonsense that you and I were forced into. And they've gone into Catholic church. You know, just as a just just to observe, just to be there. And I've had profound conversations with these people. And dude, when you listen to them who have no influence from it, and you come out and you sit down and you have a very open, you know, observant conversation with what they see, they will literally tell you that the majority of people that are in church, well, it doesn't matter what the religion is or what denomination it is, are under a trance. They're yeah. essentially hypnotized through the rituals of yeah. what they're doing in the church. And, and it's true. And you, you don't know that because bro, as you know, you're literally placed into that shit at three or four years old. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a program and it's, and, and, you know, you could say it's the same thing with spirituality where it's essentially an insurance policy. Right. Cause I remember being young and I would pray in my bed and I'd be like, well, it's better than not praying because if it's true, you know, I'm covered essentially is how you would look at it. But you're right. It's, you know, and it goes back to what I, I keep saying is, you know, what is the what is the mechanism behind it? If you're walking into a building and you because you were talking about somebody describing it. And I think to myself, imagine if you were unprogrammed and open minded and you walked into an open minded church, that could be a beautiful, high energy experience totally. if it's just pure, People you know, connecting. Yes. Yeah, it, it, and that's why me and you both say that it's not that they're necessary. They were started as a foundation. Politics get involved. Business gets involved. But anyone that is stuck in a trance and doesn't really know why, I mean, that's what it is. You know, I've been – it's not even really about being a skeptic. It's about just taking a moment, you right. know, and just going, oh, okay, you know, because – I could go join a denomination right now and it probably worked pretty good for me because I'm open to each, you exactly. know, thing. But Experience. like you said, you're three, you're four years old. I remember looking through the window at the church and seeing like they would have funerals and stuff and I wouldn't understand it. And I'd be like, well, I got to like show up. I don't know who this guy is. You know, you literally are being programmed because I, I had family members that were priests and you're literally being programmed now to be fair i know some that are programmed that are good people of like course. there's no there's no negative there like they've even helped me and i'm like yeah, oh wow course. that's great Absolutely. but like we always say you know you, you you grow up in this life and it's almost like you give up at a certain age yeah. and you say okay i'm going to do this and then you spend the rest of your life with these with this tension and this fear but you have never asked why you think that's there. Exactly. And that is the sum total of this podcast is, do you know why any of these things are going on? Why is that conduit? Why is that opening there? And if you could just, I would tell people, if you could just look at it, don't, don't even explore it. Do that later. Just look at it. You're free. You know, yeah. that's power. And obviously a lot of these things we're talking about is to not have power. Totally. So. Exactly. That's exactly right. People are disempowered, you know, and I've, obviously I read your Twitter. You're like one of the only people I read on Twitter. No, I don't think anyone reads my Twitter or your Twitter. Cause I don't think anyone sees it. Yeah, probably. Like, I think you and I have to get like personally aggressive and click on our, on our, on our handles and then drill down into it because bro, I've had people, I know you've had it too. Um, who will say like, I subscribed to you five times in the last week. And I'm like, what do you talk about? And then they're like, I don't know what I'm talking about either. I'm just telling you, I subscribe to you. And then I get, I see that I'm unsubscribed. And so I have to resubscribe, but you're right. Like we are, our, the messages that we have are not copacetic. So they block our stuff. Like I put three profound tweets up last night on Paul Wallace's book. And I'm just cutting and pasting and spacing out the sentences. I mean, his book is stands for itself, just as I did with Tom's book and nobody saw him. Yeah. Because yeah. they're blocked because they're not, I mean, look, man, the truth of, of social media is we know who runs the social media algorithm. You know, 
you and I have to dance around that just to get this podcast out into the small number of people that actually see it. I mean, I've had 28,000 people subscribe to my YouTube, YouTube channel for three years, bro. How is that even possible? They send me analytic emails. Sometimes I just laugh because it'll say you had zero subscribers this past month, or it'll be like you had three subscribers and you had blank small number of views. And then you do the math and you're like, wait a minute, how is that possible? If I have 28,000 and change subscribers, yeah, that would mean that I get less than one view per subscriber. So, I mean, you know, it's all BS. I mean, all of it. There's nothing in social media analytics that's legitimate. The only way, and again, I'll give Mike Cernovich credit for this, is that the, the only way to know if your social media is effective is by what goes in your bank account if you're promoting things. That's it, because everything else is lies. Everything. There's no way to prove anything. There's no way to prove follower counts. It's all controlled. They only want a specific message. And again, I'm not complaining. I'm not being egoic. I'm just saying it from a matter of fact and a matter of reference, but you know, back to what you were just saying, I mean, the church, I mean, dude, I ran out of church at six. Like I ran out of the back and my dad chased me out of the back of the vestibule and he's like, where are you going? And I literally told him I'm away from that cult because like I could see what was happening. And again, I, again, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody, but this at an early age, you know, similar to you, I think everybody who's walking the seeker path just has this awakening, but like I could see people genuflecting and doing all these things. And, 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 and again, like nobody is conscious that they're doing, they're it. not asking questions. They're yeah. And, and questions. Yeah. I remember being very young in many situations. And I think I wrote about this where, I just said, man, this doesn't make sense. I, I can remember doing work for family members and standing there and looking at them and going, they're all completely miserable. And they keep showing up here every day. Same with, you know, um, religious stuff. Like it's just this pattern. And I would always look and say, so is that it? And, you know, to be fair, one of the biggest awakening, woke, you know, whatever moments I had was actually, um, at a church youth group, I tweeted this or something or wrote about it the other day. And the guy was a big time recovering alcoholic. I mean, he was, I could still see his face. He was, he wasn't doing very well. And he would hold these little meetings and they were so real. They were like, so visceral, you know, and I can remember leaving one of them at a young age and having a sort of direct experience if you want to call that sitting in my car so that realness allowed it to happen but you know that was four people so there he was i, I bring that up because he was questioning things yeah you know yeah, so yeah. if if you have that in you then these things can work but i've essentially spent my entire life questioning everything yes and that's what's led me to be content at this age because especially with my background, I could have easily spent the rest of my life just a complete disaster of a mess. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, do you have it or do you not? But as we're also saying, that doesn't mean everyone has to have it. That doesn't mean that it's right. That doesn't mean that everyone listening should like be spiritual. It's like, no, just start asking questions, start getting critical. Because if you're just following everything you hear, even some of this, what are you doing? You know, so I, you know, you're right. Exactly. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. It's crazy though, because if you think about, yeah, I mean, if you, I mean, you just said it, dude, like think of all the people that have had your background and experience who came back into the world and didn't make it. Oh, I mean, I know some that haven't. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, I would argue, and again, you know better than me, but I would argue that the majority don't make it. They have TBIs, they have some sort of, you know, concussive blast, you know, brain injury, they just go off the beaten path. And then, as you know, the, you know, the, the, the federal government, you know, healthcare system is an absolute sham. Uh, there's no help in that. They don't really get any kind of aid. I mean, we already both know, like, like almost every guy who comes back and has a TBI or some sort of brain injury should be on therapeutic testosterone. That's not even debatable. Yeah. 
and almost none of them are. And if they do get lucky enough to get on it, what do they give them? Like one shot a month, bro. I mean, it's the most crazy shit you've ever seen. So it's like, it, it, it takes somebody who is like, you know, has a lot of proactive desire you know, yeah. to, to, to want to improve, like you said, to ask questions, but then it goes beyond even asking questions. It's like, okay, how am I going to get fixed? Like, you know, with you, yeah. I mean, you know, you reached out to me, you yeah. know, and you were like, Hey man, like I want to optimize this. I mean, you weren't, you know, as bad off as some of these guys by, by a long shot, you know, if, if even you even were, but you desired to, to make more and to be more. And, you know, yeah. crucially, yeah. like even at that time, like, for me, it was a reach, you know, for me to put that information out in 2015, it was a reach, you know, I mean, I remember being, you know, nervous and reaching out to Rick Collins and asking him like, what was the risk for me? Because, you know, Monica and I had a pretty successful real estate business and I didn't want to get that shut down by putting that kind of uh, information into the ether. But dude, it always works out if you know, not believe, if you know that what you're doing is asking questions to become more aware, right? Like if your desire is to become aware, you will become aware. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I've said this many times, mine started from basically pain. I mean, I, I was in, I was in, I was lucky to, I was born with this sort of, there's always a choice and that's what saved me because I was in so much pain, you know, for so many years, especially after some incidents in my life that I've wrote about. And I remember thinking that if I didn't have that little bug, that, that itch, that was like, no, there are other options that I wouldn't have made it. So, you know, it, the questioning part is to find that other option because what makes me sad for society right now is they don't believe that there is an option to be not euphoric, but to be content, I could yeah. say that I live, if not all of my life, most of my life, not necessarily happy or, you know, up here or down here, but content. I yeah. wake up right. and I feel thankful that I have four walls when it's snowing outside. That's I right. mean, it's these little, like these little things. I'm on a mountain and I have all this gear, you know, I, I really see the fact, which is into, I mean, this would be three more hours if we got into this, but is into, you know, thinking, thought, manifestation, all these avenues, which are saying nothing more than, and this is not hedonistic, but nothing more than life is a buffet. And if you're going to keep going to the section that gives you food poisoning, (laughs) what are you going to get? You know? And I, I thought, I think about that every morning I wake up, I think, wow, there are all these options to concentrate on today. What am I going to focus on is injuries or this or that, you know, it's, it, but my point of bringing that up is people don't know that exists. And That's the right. only reason I'm online or I do any of this stuff, because I've been slowly getting rid of more and more of it is to just <laughs> tell people that there's that there's that choice. And I feel bad that people don't know that like you actually could wake up tomorrow and be content. Like that actually exists. That exists. And people don't know it. It's Bro, so, it's so beautiful. So beautiful what you just said, because I'm going to read to you what I wrote to you last night. Because you know me, I don't care. I have no filter and I'm totally vulnerable at all times. But I said to you, you said to me, he goes, you said, uh, So what rabbit holes are we going down tomorrow, bro? And this is exactly what I typed. I said, whatever you want to go, brother, I'm feeling quite low at the moment. I have been super creative most of this year, but right now I'm just feeling low energy, low desire, low will, kind of over being in the third dimension. Not much for me to lie to myself about wanting to experience any longer. Now that obviously you understand that message because we've all felt that. Yeah. When you're (laughs) extremely hyper aware you have periods of low energy, but again, because of our they awareness, harder. Yeah. yeah, but because of our awareness, we understand energy fields. I mean, dude, we're now right now going off the, we're going off the beaten track right now because even my audience, which is pretty educated, they don't understand energy fields, but you and I can talk about this for a second. Hawkins did an amazing job of explaining this. I, I think he did the best job of anybody that I have ever read and explained this. He would talk about, Everything is energy and frequency, but to make it explainable, because, you know, I don't want to go down woo-woo, 
you know, consciousness stuff right now that most people don't understand, which you and I could talk and, and, and make sense out of, but let's just make it very plain. You know, Hawkins would tell people about this drug or that drug would lower your energy field or raise your energy field, right? So you and I know that MDMA, some plant medicine, some form of hallucinogens, again, in micro dosages and surgically precise dosages, raise the human energy field, right? So it's like we, when you understand that you can manipulate the energy field, and whether it's through drugs or creativity. You know, when you're a creator at the level that I create at, you just said it. Like, it's natural to experience what I said I felt last night. Now, yeah. that doesn't make me, you know, like a, you know, a homo not a homicidal, but like a, you know, depressed and suicidal. That just is me being aware and saying to you, hey, man, I'm feeling really blue and really down. And I felt that all day yesterday. And yeah. when I woke up this morning, this today, I mean, and, 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 and by the way, I've felt that many times before when I was younger and I wasn't as aware as I am now. And I felt like that, you know, that could last because as you said, the mind then plays tricks on you because you're not asking the right questions. But now, yeah. yeah. But now, cause I'm aware of my energy field, I'm aware of when I'm up and down, I can actually feel and correlate it to like, well, Hmm why am I feeling this way? And then ask the questions. I knew that I had a podcast with you today. I had another podcast with a brilliant peptide doctor earlier before you. I knew that it was just the way it was that day. And that tomorrow the sun would come up and I would do my, you know, routine, my meditational routine. I would do my cardio. I would have two amazing podcasts. And here I am right now. And all of that is exactly what's transpired because I manifested that reality, which is what you were just saying. But again, dude, yeah. people, they don't, who, and again, this is not, you know, labeling or condemning or judging, but like when you're not aware and you don't understand that you really are an energy field and you get caught up in these moments of being down or feeling depressed or feeling loathsome or feeling not enough, right? It's mostly not enough. I don't trust and love myself. Dude, that shit just spirals. Yeah. And yeah. you become- and wh- the, you call it as you call it the gar- the garbage dump. I, I mean, it really is eighty percent of humanity who is not aware of these things, and they stay in the garbage dump because they don't know how to get out of the garbage dump, bro. Yeah, and that's why the word aware is so good in all this because it's not it, it's not saying you know everyone be Buddha because I would say that if you didn't send that message, that would be worse because right. then it's just a program going beep boop boop up uh, the fact that you could see it and I've had those days and it, you made a really good point about creation because I've I had those days especially on other apps where I would say, okay, so I'm doing all of this for what? What is the reason? What is the thing? And that's when you start going down those holes. But the good point you made was, I mean, it's a really great point. I've never thought about is like something like a psychedelic or creating. I mean, creating in itself is that choice. It's that choice. And Hawkins talked about attractor patterns. That was his big thing in Power Verse Force. And honestly, I remember reading that section and being like, I don't even have to read the rest of this book. It's like (laughs) basically... That's it's it. basically the idea that it's not even woo woo. It's the idea of there are multiple things going on. You are, a, you eat, you live, it, you, you, you know, radiate heat. If that system is focused on one thing, what are you going to become? Exactly. That one thing. Exactly. For my life, for many years, I have little notes that I wrote back when I was doing the work I did. And in these notes, it was a constant theme of I can think my way out of every unsafe situation. I just need to be, you know, they call it in that line of work, situational awareness, blah, 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 blah. But then as time went on, it's like, wait a second. My only focus in that life was fear, not trying to get killed, blah, 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 and all this. And it's like, so guess what my life was? for 20 plus years. And then you wake up one day and you go, that's why awareness and waking up is a good word. Cause it's not implying this high being that me and you are. No, it's looking, look. And I was like, Holy crap, there is a such thing as me not being like this. And that's when it clicked over. And I tell this story all the time, but it's a good one. When my mom was killed and I was overseas, I'll never forget this. I was staring up. I was in this, 
I don't know what it was, like a mud hut or something when they pulled me in. And I remember staring at this spot in the ceiling, and that was the choice point in my life. I said, right here is where everything changes. I either go crazy, become an alcoholic, drugs, all this, or I don't. And yeah. that was the most important time of my life to even know that that or you don't exist. And I believe that that was, you know, call them whatever, the creator source saying, here you go, but you've got you've to take it. So the point is, you know, knowing that that choice exists, that is the point of all of this. That is I, the point. I have an interesting question about that for you. And it just made, it popped in my mind and triggered me too. Because obviously at that point, you were not the Jason, the, the highly aware guy that you are now, no. just as I wasn't the highly aware guy when I attempted to kill myself. Do you think at those extreme times in our you know, current incarnation, because you said it, you know, source or whatever, you know, I would even call it maybe like our guardian angels or our guides, because clearly there are beings that are watching over us. Do you think they step in? Because I mean, if you really think about yourself as aware as you are now, you were not that fucking dude at that time. If anything, you were thinking no. like, I'm going to go back and I'm going to cut this motherfucker's head off and parade it around in the street. Right. And I would have done the same thing. And I remember when I like was going to kill myself when my whole life dropped out, my life of nothing, right. Everything was nothing. Uh, I was just like, I just remember jerking my car to the side of the road and sitting there and shaking for literally like 15 or 20 minutes. And then dude, something just popped into my mind of like, wow, I got a second chance. I'm, I'm fixing this. I mean, dude, oh, it was yeah. literally like, it was put in there. Yeah. Because I went yeah. from literally like my life's over. Oh my God. What was me victim to like, wow, I got a second chance. So do you think that that, point when you were looking at the ceiling that you were influenced by quote unquote, you know, the divine? I mean, I feel like I can't say no. I, I think it's, it yeah. definitely is. The problem is, you know, we get into words and usage. It's difficult. But what when you were talking, it also made me think of the incidents we've talked about when we were younger. So I yeah. think certain people are probably born almost like a network, uh, you know, like a modem where some ports are open, Elite, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and you could kind of get it, you know, because we know people that would never get those insights. But, you know, I, when I came home after that incident, cause I was sent right home, I was drinking, doing all the dumb shit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I had moments though. I had, I had a moment where, I thought I was dying. Literally, I drank too much or something like that. And I heard, you know, my mom talking and all these. Yeah. So there, and then I've said the incidents before about when we donated her stuff and people came because they don't know what happened. Of course, people came back to the store and they reported some lady with brown hair and white told me to tell you to tell them this. Yes. And it was exactly us. So you look at these things. And you go, I can remember being in the mountains and having moments and saying, hey, if, if you're out there and this is real, I need a sign right now. And then 20 minutes Boom. later, there's a dog walking at 10,000 feet, barking his head off with no owner. And I'm like, what the <laughs> hell is it going? So it almost makes it difficult to say that there is it. But you know me, I, I try to be very like, let's bring it. Let's bring it here. But it, it gets hard as time goes on, like your incident to say, okay, well, why did you turn that car? You didn't have to. Why'd you turn it? Why? I mean, I'll tell you, I can't tell you the thoughts that I had. I can't say it on this podcast. Well, I don't even know what made I had. me turn the steering right. wheel. It just was like a re an instinctive reaction. And then it was shaking for 15 or 20 minutes violently, like, you know, looking out, like thinking like, I didn't kill anybody. I didn't kill anybody. This is a miracle. This is a miracle. And then all of a sudden it was like, I have a second chance. I'm telling you, That's it was implanted huge. in my consciousness. You just made me think though, with the dog, the only way, the only better what thing that your mom could have done right there is she would have like a a, a bib around the dog that said, nobody cares on the side of it. <laughs> or there's <laughs> some good food or something. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, in the way I look at that <laughs> stuff and I'll, I'll end this point on that is, um, my sort of context, my my like metaphysical outlook on life has more or less turned into 
with all these things that we can explain, there's something more going on. So right. you don't have to be right. spiritual. You don't have to be religious. 100%. It's like near death experiences. We can't, I read a book. It was like this 500 page book, totally unspiritual, unreligious by like an investigative reporter talking about how people would die like on the operating table yep. and then report back all these information. And they would show the reports from the doctors that would say, I can't explain any of this period. So when you look at that and you look at what we're talking about, there's something more going on. And yeah. while we may not be able to get down to every detail, that alone is, is, is probably why I'm still doing this, if you call it that, because there's enough proof out there that isn't proof that answers a lot of these questions we're talking about. Exactly, so. dude. I mean, I, I really, I mean, that's beautiful. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's a great way to look at it. You know, that way you don't piss anybody off and getting into it. I mean, yeah. I, I will just say to add, and then we can end the show or Ed's great podcast is just, you know, as I've gone deeper well, I would even go back, back one, you know, like my life was forced into Catholicism, walked away, but, you know, technically was still in it because I was going to Catholic high schools and moving from state to state and doing all this nonsense and getting beat by nuns on the knuckles with rulers, oh, yeah, you yeah. know, because I literally was that guy would say, but Sister Mary Jo, why is that? Because God said so. Boom. She would slam yeah. me on my knuckles, right? So I was always asking the questions. But then eventually, dude, I got into college and it was like, I'm an atheist. This is absolute bullshit. Because you knew, right? Like, I mean, people like us walking the seeker's path, we were lied to in religion by the religiosity, the leaders in the of the church, whether it was the priest or the nun, you know, or the Anglican preacher or the, you know, the the Episcopal, Episcopalian, you know, whatever denomination you came from, if you were walking these paths, you know, you knew these people were lying to you. So then, dude, I went from atheism to agnostic because I literally had a college professor who was a former priest who told me this amazing story about climbing to the top of the Great Pyramid. And he was, this is when he was like divine and seeking. And he said his story, I think I've told you this before, but he got all the way up. It was during a hot summer day when he was, and he was in this cavalcade of people. And he's like waiting for, uh, you know, to get to the top of the pyramid. And he was going to be ordained with some sort of divine presence. And he's like, the only thing that was up there was a better one singing, selling Pepsi. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's so a he wild was literally story. Like, he was literally like, this is such bullshit. So, but listening to him, you know, I then became an agnostic. And then into my early 30s, I was, it was the aliens. And then later, you know, I got, I, I, I before I met you, but I, I got introduced to Hawkins and uh, a couple other people. I know I re was reading other um, people. And then, dude, eventually I just started realizing that. The more I became introspective and meditative or sitting in stillness or nature, you know, with my dog or without my dog, the more I would receive downloads yeah. about spiritual meanings and the more things would make more sense. You know, we would be more connected. I remember when you and I started, you know, fasting and, and remember all the downloads that you and I were receiving and how much more connected we felt and how much more answers came to us. So to what you were saying, like when you walk this path, and you do enough inner work, you know, which is reflection or inward practicing or thinking or meditation or whatever you want to call it. Like, bro, it becomes obvious that yeah, there is man. something beyond guiding us. And look, man, like y there's definitely negative and positive forces, you know, equal but opposite at work. I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, that the beneficial, quote unquote, divine benevolence are, are stronger, you know, because it always will reflect back to that, you know, if you do anything in quantum physics. But there's equal forces. You, what you give your attention to is what you're going to get back. So all these nihilist people, these atheist people. That's these, what you know, they get. Yeah. That's exactly what they yeah. get, bro. That's what yeah. they create, right? Like if you're a skeptic of everything, well, guess what? You're going to get skepticism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's exactly right. And and that and there is a such thing as these forces. And I think my opinion is that it's more about the antenna in us. You know, exactly. it's like, what are you I keep saying it, but like, what are you open to? You know, like the world is just this, you know, modge podge. And what are you jumping into? You know, and you're exactly right. If If you're 
walking around saying there's no point to be here. I'm a nihilist, blah, blah, blah. It is a guarantee that that's what you're going to get. Now, I also wouldn't say wake up every day and I'm euphoric, but you right, know, right, right. it's that's like, no, possible. they're, that's not yeah. Possible. It, it, and, and, you know, it's funny that story you were talking about the guy getting to the top of the pyramid and there being the guy selling soda. That to me is the path of enlightenment. That's the right. real one. That's when right. you literally get to the top of the mountain and you're just like, Oh, I heard a guy describe this once. It was beautiful in a book. And he said, you get to the top, you see everything and you go, okay, there's nothing up here, but I'll take this down with me. And that's, that's right. the, I mean, that is enlightenment right there. Right. It's just that's right. it's sitting there and going, oh, so I'll just have a Pepsi. I mean, like that's- That's exactly okay. right, dude. Remember what Walter yeah. Russell said. Walter Russell said, the path is, we all are birthed into the bottom of the jungle and the path is back to the top of the mountain. Yeah. And the enlightenment Perfect. is getting- to the top of the mountain. And not only is it getting to the top of the mountain, it's realizing that you got to go back down. Yeah, that's, oh, you nailed it. That is so perfect. And not a lot of people are saying that because it's like the whole idea of your head can be in the clouds, but your feet are still on this earth. That's you right. Know? And that's, I, I totally agree. It, and, and it's a thing that has missed a lot in spirituality is this magical and, and, and here's the thing, as you know, you will have those moments. You will have, I've had, I think one of the big, biggest moments I had was while fasting, staring out my back door in the mountains, just, just like, holy crap, you know, like you are going to have amazing. those moments, yeah. Yeah. but we grab and we say, oh, well, I'm not spiritual unless I'm always in that moment. Well, if you're always in that moment, who's going to pay the bills here? Who's going to, you know, you are still here. And, you know, that, that's a good message to leave this on is like anyone that's seeking and searching, you still have to be here, you know, but there is a such thing as being, in, you know, content where you are. So, yeah, dude, exactly. I mean, exactly. And that's beautiful. Um, I would just say, too, and then we end and, you know, you can uh, have I'll post your thing. I'll just put it up now. So so you guys can find Jason on Substack and, 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 and look, man, you're my friend and you know, you know me, I'm not going to blow smoke and rainbows up your ass, but your shit is amazing. His emails are as good as anything I read. Uh, he is one of the very few people who I read his email every time it goes out, please subscribe to his Substack, follow him on Twitter. You know, it's the same thing on Twitter. He's also on, you're still on Instagram or did you delete it? No, I got off of that. Okay, yeah, IG. Well, he used to be the outdoor goon. He had a huge following on um, Instagram. That's probably a smart move. We can talk about that the next time we get together about getting rid of uh, social media. But I would just say, and again, you taught me this. So I use situational awareness in all of my writings because I learned about that from Jason when he did a lot of explaining to me. Jason mentored me for a long time. I want to say from like 2016 to 2017, we had a lot of different deep spiritual conversations and I'm sure we were able to help each other, but he did a lot for me in that. But um, joy, I used to use the word happiness, but I realize now joy that happiness, yeah, happiness yeah. is a transient feeling mm. and joy is a state of being and joy yeah. can be had with a thought. Oh, and yeah. people don't realize that because again, they're so programmed, as you said, by the spiritual gurus and the, you know, the modern sages that we have to do something to get there. We have to gain something. We have to create something. We have to, you know, again, there's doing and being, you know, doing, doing, doing instead yeah. of just choosing joy. And it goes back to like what you were saying. It's every morning mm -hmm. when you wake up, it's a choice. To whether or not to be in joy or to be in pain and suffering. And again, we know 80% of people are choosing, and maybe it's higher, like you said, choosing pain and suffering. And whether or not it's because they have no coping patterns or mechanisms to not do anything but choose that, that's not on us. Because as you know, the internet and technology and books give you the ability to learn a different path. But dude, I'm telling you, man, like once I started realizing that every time I wake up in the morning, it's a choice everything changed for me because you don't yeah, ever same have here. negative, bro. Yeah. Gratitude. You know, that's the word. It's just joy. And I remember going through a phase where it was really difficult, where I would say, I don't really know. And sometimes I still feel this where 
I don't really know what to do with that. I, I spent all these years in the opposite of joy, the opposite of gratitude. And now that I'm in it a lot, it you do get these moments where you think, oh man, like I, I literally looked out my back door yesterday at a mountain with snow on it that I've seen 9 billion times. And I was just grateful to be able to see that, you know, right. it's, it's, it is a choice. And, and the last point is exactly what you said. Everything changes when you realize there's a choice. I mean, that that's it. That's the path. You do, If you realize that, you're on it. It's automatic. You'll be pulled instead of pushed and you're good to go. Dude, amazing podcast, man. I don't know really what else to say. I never do podcasts with anybody beyond 60 minutes today, but you and I haven't been together in a while. Um, so guys and gals, man, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. I mean, obviously sign up to Jason's Substack. It's eremitus.substack.com, or you can also follow him as the same name on Twitter. And of course, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We'll see all of you guys very soon.